Even if third gen fans, this is Ed here with Eddie Speed Garage. You guys might notice that I'm at the back of the car this time, and there's a good reason for that. We're going to be doing a drum disc swap from a 2002 Camaro Z28 in my 92 Z28. So I just need a little bit better braking performance, and I think that's what's going to give it to me. And this is really low budget. You get all the parts from the junkyard, make sure you grab everything that's related to the brakes that you can to make this a little bit easier. I hear people say that there's issues with the with the parking brake, but you know, if, if you're mechanically inclined enough, you can figure that out on your own. Also, I'm not gonna show you every single detail going on with this swap, like how to pull the cover off the differential, how to pull the pin out so you can get the axles out. You know, all, most of that's common knowledge. If you don't already know that, this is probably not something that you wanna do. And if you do wanna do it without knowing that, then there's probably videos that show you how. But for now, we're gonna get started and here we go. All right guys, first things first, you're gonna get your old drums off. Do this the same on both sides. As you can see, there's a lot of confusing stuff going on in there. And on top of that, this is just an old antiquated way of doing things. You got one brake surface here, which rides on these shoes. When you put the disc brakes in, you'll be more contact on both sides. They do a lot better job. It's a much smaller package. It might even save some weight. All right, guys, so here we are at the differential cover. This is a series of 13 millimeter bolts all the way around. You do want to have a replacement gasket for this when you open this up, as well as I bought new bearings and new seals for the outside. Just because if I'm in there, I might as well do it anyways. Here we go. All right, guys, so the cover is off. What we're going to do now, I'm going to pull this little bolt here so that we can get this sleeve out. Then we'll pull the C-clips out and then pull the axles out. All right, guys, I got everything done underneath the car. The C-clip is out. Just a note for all you non-posi guys, this will be a bit easier for you. It's a little harder for the guys that have a posi. And it just slides right out of there. Now, the next thing you gotta do is remove all this brake hardware. It's something I've never done without the axle in the way but I think it's gonna make things a lot easier. So once you got all your stuff out of the way, this is what you're left with. You know, brake cylinder there, emergency cable, and this nut here. So basically we gotta get these two bolts out, plus this nut back here, and that whole thing's gonna come off. All right guys, one more thing you gotta do back here is you gotta get this brake line loose. You don't want to cut or tear into that too much because you're going to reuse most of it if you can. There we go, we're free. So you see the brake line still sitting right there leaking all over everything. We're going to have to modify this flange here by cutting right across here so that we can get this out of the way so that the new brake bracket will fit right. All right, guys. The new bearing and the new seal is in. I've got it taped off. The next thing we're going to do, draw a couple lines here at the bottom of that circle and go ahead and make a cut. All right, folks, now I'm gonna mark this across the bottom of this hole here with this builder square and a chisel all the way across. So I have a nice straight line to cut off. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna drill the four holes. These holes, well, you might wanna use them. They're not gonna be perfectly centered. So you're gonna to have to place this on there find center around the hub and then then you'll drill your holes all right folks so what i did was since this side the hub is smaller than the inside of the bracket i ran a piece of i ran some electrical tape to take out all the slops so it'll be perfectly centered all the way around and around and around and around till i got it to fit snug now it looks like i'll be able to catch one hole here perfectly this one's a little bit off and these two will have to be brand new all right so 
I got the first hole drilled, I put the bolt in there, made it real tight, I took this clamp off, and now I've center drilled it with the larger bit. I'm gonna switch to a smaller bit. I'm gonna finish drilling these holes. All right, so we've drilled all four holes out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my electrical tape. I'm gonna put some Rust-Oleum up here to make it look a little bit better. One thing I will note, I had to grind back these corners a little bit to make it fit properly in the backing plate. All right, so I've got the caliper bracket all the way installed, plus I slid the axle back in. I'm gonna put the rotor on. Of course, I washed it to get all the oil off of it. It's like a glove. Next, we're gonna put the caliper and brakes on. All right, next we're gonna install the caliper bracket. Like I'm just, this is all fitment purposes only. Breaks in place. All right, as you can see, she fits very well. Got no clearance on the issues on the caliper or brake at all. One thing I did notice is the lug nuts are a little bit short now, so I'm gonna have to get a whole new set of those, 10 pieces. But overall, I'm happy with how it looks right now. And there's a few more other things we gotta do before we close out the video. All right, so this is the bracket that attaches to the lower control arm mount. It holds the parking brake cable here and your flexible hose for your brake line at this end. It goes right up in here, just like this, but it has a tab here. So what'll have to happen is you'll have to drill a hole so that you can get your bolt lined up and this tab has something to hold on to. So I've got my hole drilled. I'm gonna put my bolt back in through my lower control arm. In perfect fit. All right, guys, this is the brake line we're going to install. It goes into the bracket that I just installed in the front. And if you did like I told you, you grab the clip. It just goes on there like that. And that's in. That's not going that way. So now we need to make the brake lines together. All right, folks, that's the brake line connected to the existing brake line that was already there. All I had to do was cut that, slide the fitting back on and rebubble it. All right, guys, this is a finished product. This is the passenger rear side. Uh, this side, the brake line didn't need any type of adjustment other than bending around to the other side and screwing it in. The 92 third gen, at least this one, has a bubble flare already and the fitting hooked right up to the 2002 brakes. So we're good to go there. It's all installed. This is the finished product. Like and subscribe, and I can't wait to get this thing out on the road.